Israel Finkelstein is a leading figure in the archaeology and history of ancient Israel. Over 40 years of fieldwork and research, he has helped to change the way archaeology is conducted, the Bible is interpreted, and the history of Israel is reconstructed. I sat down with Israel over several sessions to talk about how a lifetime of work has informed the story of ancient Israel. Hi Israel, welcome Hi, to the Albright. Sure. Today we're talking about the Philistines. Give us a little introduction that tells us who these Philistines are. So the Bible gives us these uh, timeless images of the Philistines, the duel between David and Goliath, Samson carrying the gates of Gaza, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, the story of the travel of the Ark to the Philistine right. cities. These come from the Bible. Yet the Bible depicts the Philistines, first of all, as bad, shows them as bad guys. They are the bad guys because they are the neighbors of the people who write, of the people of Israel, the two Hebrew kingdoms. And uh, in modern language, because of that, we are looking at them also a little bit like cultureless. Because if you say to somebody, you are a Philistine, you mean you are ignorant, a little, a little bit stupid. <laughs> However, they were, uh, they formed a culture which was uh, quite elaborate and important, the material culture, the history is very interesting, and they make a very important link in the history of the region in the Iron Age. And we can trace that archaeology for more than five centuries. Uh, when we start to look at the historical texts to, to, to understand the Philistines, we're looking at kind of a divergence of sources, one batch of texts which comes from very early in the history of the Philistines in the 12th, 11th centuries. And then we have the biblical text on the other side, which as we've already discussed in the series, comes from the 8th, 7th centuries right. in some cases. So I think that we need to make a, a separation here. It will be more methodological, so to speak, to have one conversation today about the early history and material culture of the Philistines, the settlement of the Philistines, which means today we focus on the beginning of the Iron Age, and in a later talk, we'll speak about the biblical Philistines. However, we need to keep in mind that we are speaking about the same people, which means that there is continuity, archaeological, historical, in the coastal plain of Canaan, land of Israel, between these early Iron Age Philistines and the later Iron Age Philistines who are present in the Bible. So we can go to the biblical text and look at the places where Philistines are said to live, match those up with the contemporary places in the biblical text, and see that the material culture traditions go all the way back to this early period? We need to list the sources for understanding the history and material culture of the Philistines. So we have the Bible. There's no question about it. And we need to keep the Bible in the background. And as you said, the Bible is important also because it gives us the geographical stage setting, if you wish, naming the main centers of the Philistines, Gaza, Ashkelon, Ashdod, Gat, and Ekron. So what are our earliest textual sources that we can link to the Philistines? The most important uh, texts for understanding the early history of the Philistines come from Egypt. And these are the reliefs and the inscriptions on the mortuary, on the walls of the mortuary temple of Ramesses III in, at Medinot Habu in Upper Egypt. Uh, tells us the story about how Egypt managed to stop uh, the invasion of the sea peoples, including among them the Philistines. Then we have another Egyptian source, which is highly important, the great pap Papyrus Haris, uh, written shortly after the time of Ramesses III, uh, his successor, and describing his time of Ramesses III, and telling again the story of how the Egyptians managed to stop the Philistines and then block them take them and settle them in their fortresses. And of course, the question here is to locate the places where the Philistines were allegedly uh, settled uh, by uh, Ramesses III in the 12th century BC. And then we have a few later Egyptian sources mentioning uh, the Sea Peoples, and among them the Philistines. They are also important for the general picture of uh, understanding these uh, people. You mentioned the Sea Peoples in these Egyptian sources. Uh, what exactly are these Sea Peoples? We know that there are a number of different ethnic groups that are mentioned by the Egyptians. 
And we know that this is also taking place around the same time as the late Bronze Age collapse. How do we put these things together? Yes, yeah, so Ra Ramesses III ruled uh, for a long time in the 12th century BC. He was the last great king of Egypt, in fact, before the disintegration of the new kingdom of Egypt in the late uh, 12th century BC. And he says that the battles with the invading sea peoples took place in his eighth year. Now, according to most chronologies for this time, we are speaking here the battle, about the battles around 1175 BC, which means we are in the beginning of the 12th century. And here we need to take into consideration that we are already into the main event of the collapse of the Bronze Age. So things are connected. Apparently, the movement of groups of sea peoples from somewhere in the Mediterranean, we will focus later exactly where from, they start moving because of the problems uh, uh, in the late 13th and beginning of the 12th century. They are pushed to move to uh, start migrating by sea and probably also by land, seeking uh, new territories. And uh, so uh, these two uh, phenomena need to be connected. The collapse of the Bronze Age, including the climate crisis at the end of the late Bronze Age, we discussed this in one of our previous talks, and the uh, uh, movement of groups of people that uh, come from the sea, from the west, if you wish, to the coast of the Levant in the 12th century BC. We need to remember, and it is important to say here, that we are not speaking only about the Philistines. The Egyptians, and you mentioned that, they list several groups. And some of them appear also uh, in other sources. So the most important of them are, of course, the Philistines because of the Bible. There's no question of, about that. But there's also another group, the Sikila. Right. And the Sikila are mentioned by in another uh, source that comes from Egypt and dates to the 11th or to the 10th century BC. And it affiliates, it connects, associates the, fil the, the Sikila story with the central coast of Canaan, which means a little bit to the north of what we call today Philistia, the five Philistine cities. And then there is another group which is quite well known in the Egyptian uh, text, and this is the Sherdana. So the Philistines do not stand alone. They are part of a broader phenomenon, and this is why it is absolutely leg legitimate to connect this broader phenomenon with the collapse of the Bronze Age. So if we're really going to attack the, uh, the issue of the Philistines and their early history, their pre-biblical history, if you will, uh, I think we need to start with the very beginning. We know from these historical sources that these Philistines are coming from somewhere else. Is there a way that we can get at understanding where they have come from? I think we need here to go a little bit into the history of research in the last, what, century or so. Uh, a very important point is the fact that when archaeology started in the southern coastal plain of Canaan, archaeologists uh, observed and noticed that there is specific material culture in the beginning of the Iron Age, appearing in the beginning of the Iron Age in that area, and that this material culture is somehow related to traditions which can be associated with the late bronze Greece. And this uh, gave us the connection between uh, the Philistines and uh, the West, uh, and the connection also, if you wish, with the Egyptian sources mentioning that they are coming from the West, that they are coming from the sea. Also, by the way, the tradition in the Bible, which affiliates them with the islands and especially with Crete. So the archaeology, the material culture of the early phase of the Iron Age with these uh, special uh, features, especially in the pottery uh, of uh, this uh, site, uh, is very important. So there was evidence, ostensibly, that indeed the Philistines ca came with the Sea Peoples from the West. However, about 30 years ago or so, the other voices started to be heard in uh, scholarly circles saying, well, you know, these could have been influence that arrived from afar without people really moving. Mm -hmm. And do we really need have information about mass migration from the Aegean Basin to the coast of the Levant in the Iron One? So people started, started questioning the very foundation of uh, the history of uh, these groups, of the Sea Peoples, by challenging the idea, not challenging perhaps the idea of some people attacking and uh, appearing, you know, on the 
margin of the Egyptian empire in the 12th century, but challenging the idea of mass migration and settlement of groups uh, on, in the case of the Philistines in the southern coast of, uh, coastal plain. So this was the situation about 30 years ago. And I think that in the last 10, 15, 20 years, we made a very significant progress in understanding that indeed we do have information for uh, these groups coming from the West, having, how to say, a European background in the sense that the Aegean Basin gives us this European connection, if you wish. And why do I say this? Because of ancient DNA studies, these studies began only about, what, 10, 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And now we have information for both human ancient DNA and animal ancient DNA. And I think it's, it's good to provide the information here. Uh, a recent study on burials uh, at Ashkelon showed that indeed uh, there is um, uh, a clue there for the fact that um, uh, several burials from the beginning of the Iron Age perhaps uh, carry um, DNA which can be associated uh, with the, the Aegean Basin, with the, the Greek world if you wish, uh, of the second uh, millennium BC. There are pro certain problems there regarding dating, but still the information is quite important. Mm -hmm. Even more interesting than this, because of the uh, strong evidence, I mean, uh, is what uh, we have regarding um, uh, animal bones. We archaeologists noticed a long time ago that the uh, Philistines, which means the people who s settled in these cities on the southern coast of uh, Canaan, uh, consumed uh, pork and they raised pigs and they consumed pork in very uh, significant uh, percentages out of the um, uh, archaeological assemblages in these places such as uh, Ashkelon and uh, Ekron um, as examples. So we started asking the question, what's going on here? Why are these uh, Philistines so special and outstanding also compared to the contemporary evidence for, say, Canaanite, quote-unquote, or people in the highlands uh, who could be already considered as early Israelites or proto-Israelites? So the question also was on the table, did they bring pigs with them? Is, this, is it part of their culture? And uh, when we, uh, a while ago, 10, 15 years ago, I started a project uh, on uh, um, archaeology of the Iron Age and the exact life sciences, and we uh, all already we also had a DNA track there. And Merav Meiri from Tel Aviv University did the actual work. She started by looking at the uh, pig bones. First of all, the modern pig bones from Israel, and we already noticed that to differ from other regions in the Middle East, here we have evidence for Aegean or European pigs to differ from Middle Eastern pigs. And then, even today, uh, and then we said, okay, if this is the situation, when did it start? When was the shift from the Middle Eastern, Near Eastern type of pigs to the European types? And we conducted ancient DNA studies of bones from sites, and we noticed that the first appearance of the European pigs is around 1000 BC. So it was really easy to suggest, at least, that what we have here is evidence for the Philistines bringing with them European pigs. So it was part of their culture. It was also good, if you wish, for the travel and sea, because the pigs could have cleaned the ships, but it was part of the culture. So the DNA, both human DNA and animal DNA, provide us today with the evidence that indeed these groups arrived from the West. So the DNA suggests very strongly that we have a population of humans and their animals which are coming from Europe, from the West. Can we be more specific with the DNA evidence or other historical evidence about where more precisely? For the time being, not from the DNA. But uh, we can say a few words about the textual evidence. First of all, the Egyptians say that they come from the islands in the West, from the Mediterranean in the islands. And we have really a very strong link in material culture with Cyprus of the time. This does not mean that they originated in Cyprus, but Cyprus could have been, you know, some sort of a, a, a place on the way or another 
um, uh, location where the groups uh, settled uh, on the way to the east to the coast of the Levant. Then we have several other indications. First of all, we have the Bible. The Bible makes a very strong case for the Philistines linked to Crete. This is a little bit problematic, but needs to be kept in mind. We will speak about it when we come to the Philistines in the Bible, but we need to keep it in the background, of course, this piece of information. And then there is another piece of information that comes from the uh, text of Ugarit of the beginning of the 12th century. There is another group there called the Luca, and they probably come from the coast of Lycia, which means from the southwestern coast of what is today Turkey, Asia Minor. All in all, we cannot locate the Philistines to one place and say, well, here's the city or here's the region, be it in um, what is today Greece or Turkey or the islands, and they came from there. But we have a very good basic understanding that uh, we are dealing with the, this corner of the Mediterranean, the Aegean Basin, the southern coast of uh, Turkey, and the islands. All right, the Egyptian reliefs of Ramses III depict two different battles, a sea battle and a land battle. And scholars have often made uh, a big deal of this in trying to understand how the Philistines got to what would later be called Philistia. So uh, I, think, I think we can say both in both ways. I think that uh, we have enough evidence when we combine the, all the pieces of evidence, the Egyptian reliefs, the Egyptian inscriptions, the Ugarit uh, inscriptions from the north, the Ugarit inscriptions, the Bible, if you wish, archaeology, we have evidence for both because they definitely came by sea. We know this from the reliefs, the sea battle between the Egyptians and the Philistines. We know that they came from the island. They could not uh, walk <laughs> over the Mediterranean, you know. And um, we also know from the ancient DNA, the pigs issue that we discussed, that this is also an evidence, if you wish. Pigs cannot uh, be walked, you know, thousands of kilometers, you know, with the people moving. So peop pigs, pigs can't were, fly. Pigs can fly. Pigs <laughs> uh, uh, cannot walk uh, long distance. So they were put on the ships and brought uh, over uh, over sea. So there's plenty of evidence, I think. And also there's strong evidence for moving by land. And here I wish to add another piece of evidence. In, uh, Med at Medina Tabu, in this temple of Ramesses the third, we also see a scene of groups of sea peoples moving with women and children. Right. So we actually see some sort of a migration. And um, uh, there is now another interpretation by a student of mine, uh, Shirley Bendor Evian, who uh, interprets uh, some of the inscriptions as evidence for a battle that took place in the Valley of Levan Lebanon. So a battle in the Valley of Lebanon between Ram uh, Ramses III and the invading sea peoples uh, provides evidence for movement by land. So we can see the Philistines and the greater sea peoples as part of the collapse of the Bronze Age. People are on the move. When we're Looking specifically at the Philistines in the territory that would become Philistia, are we talking about a large group of people? How many are we talking? I would say the following. It's a good question because we are speaking about this uh, migration. The whole thing collapses. The Bronze Age uh, empires collapse. People on the move. So how many came and settled uh, on the coast of the Levant, and specifically in Philistia, as you asked, uh, as you asked me? I think one thing we, we can brush aside, we are not dealing with the, what I would call a Normandy scene of World War II, which means an invasion with hundreds of uh, boats uh, uh, near the coast and the troops are uh, uh, disembarking and invading the coast. This is not the case. Why do I say this? Because we can run a very simple study and evaluate the demographic situation in the late Bronze Age, we have very strong uh, uh, bank, data bank, for the settlements in Philistia in the late Bronze and for the settlements in the same region in the Iron One, in the beginning of the Iron Age. And we see that the difference in the number of sites and demographic situation between the two periods is uh, not very dramatic. 
and the numbers are not very big. We cannot uh, 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 think about, you know, annihilation of the entire population of the southern coastal plain by the invading sea peoples of the 12th mm -hmm. century BC. So we are speaking about several thousands of people who settled mainly in the urban centers. There is also archaeology evidence that puts the spotlight on the urban centers, on these Philistine cities that the Bible also refers to. And we also have reasons to argue that the countryside remained very much Canaanite, quote unquote, in the sense of continuity from the Bronze Age. So do you imagine that there are waves of migration, if you will, of small groups of people who are finding homes in the late Bronze Age Canaanite strongholds and their populations are growing there until Philistine culture becomes dominant? I think that what you describe is exactly what happened. And I think that in order to verify this, we need to go a little bit into uh, the details of chronology. Because there has been, re in recent years, a big discussion regarding the exact date within the 12th century uh, of the settlement of the Philistines. Because the, the question was the following. Can we identify the f Egyptian forts where Ramses says that he settled the Philistines can we identify them with Egyptian forts in the southern coastal plain of Canaan, or, or, or we are dealing with Egyptian forts in Egypt? We don't know exactly. So the question is whether we can find evidence for early Philistine material culture in the Egyptian strata, so to speak, of the end of the late Bronze Age in the 12th century, before the pull out of Egypt. Or do we see the first indications of Philistine material culture after the pullout of Egypt? The difference is between the beginning to middle of the 12th century and the late 12th century. I'm not going to go into the discussion here. Let me just say and, and, and refer to what you said before, that we are probably dealing with the long process which could have started sometime with very small groups, still not uh, indicating specific material culture in the middle of the 12th century. But the main evidence comes after the pull out of Egypt, because we cannot identify Philistine material culture as we understand it today, the early Philistine material culture w uh, in the Egyptian uh, layers in the southern coastal plain. So we are dealing with a, with, with a process that could have taken you know, over a century of uh, small groups migrating to the coast of the Levant. It sounds to me like what you're describing are refugees. In a sense that they were refugees of the uh, collapse of the Bronze Age. Let's get a quick summary of today's talk. Summary would be the following. Uh, the movement of the sea peoples from the Mediterranean to the coast of the Levant was part of the collapse of the Bronze Age in the 12th century BC. There are several groups mentioned in the Egyptian sources, among them the Philistines. The Philistines, we know from both the Bible and one Egyptian source, that they settled in the southern coastal plain of Canaan. They settled there probably in a process starting sometimes in the middle to late 12th century and continuing probably into the beginning of the 11th century. We are not speaking about very big groups, uh, probably altogether several thousands of people uh, who came and settled mainly in the urban centers of the southern coastal plain. And they came basically from this uh, corner of the Mediterranean, which includes the Aegean Basin, the southern coast of Turkey, and the islands. Okay, that's a good introduction to the people who will later be known in the Bible as the Philistines. In our next conversation, let's take a look at what the Bible thinks of these guys. With pleasure.